And welcome back. Just want to start off by saying new year, new me. But actually, this is the first video of the year, which is great. Um, I hit a small milestone of 5,100 plus subscribers, which is amazing. Uh, today's video will be about making an aura on your character, like a pulsating effect that repeats whatever the character is doing and it like enlarges and fades out. So before I explain it, uh, I'll show you what it looks like. As you can see here, it's something that matches to the image of the character, moves with him, and it enlarges and fades out. Now, a disclaimer. Um, there may be a better way to do this. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if there was. Uh, this is how I know to do it. And it works for me. It could work for you too. So it's, you know, there's always ways of doing things that other people know better or worse. But, you know, as long as you learn something from this, at least, you know, you're getting somewhere. Making some kind of progress. Uh, I've renamed Kung Fu uh, Sample Man to Tutorial Man. And uh, to start off, we need to do a few codes. So we're going to go to the... Um, since I'm using Eichmann Go, I'm going to use the negative four states. The negative four states are just better to use for certain things. They don't get affected by um, hit pauses and other kind of pauses and stuff. They're always active. And uh, yeah. So first off, I'm going to assign uh, my anim alum number. Zero is the current animation. Uh, to variable tw two. Yeah. Variable two. Um, you can assign things with a null and the trigger. Like this will assign this value to this variable, and you can make multiples of this if you want to assign other things, such as like, uh, let's see, three. This is the assigning thing. Uh, colon and it equals. Let's do val x. So now variable three is my x velocity. You can do this to assign all sorts of things for the characters, and you can you know use it for other purposes we don't need that for this though this is all we need for this one and then you need a helper summoning code the helper summoning code I have the trigger as num helper and then the ID 4100 equals zero so if the helper does not exist then it'll make it exist and this code also prevents it from spawning infinite helpers or at least as much as the engine will allow before it'll crash and burn and die so this is like a safety in a sense, just to make sure it only spawns one of those helpers. And now, um, helper type normal, give it your name, give it an ID number that matches this number and the state number. I like to keep them matching the same. That's my personal thing. Um, super move time, pause move time, negative one. This will keep it pulsating during a super pause and a pause. Um, you got to play with it to see how you like it, how you want it. You could put zero or negative one for it always works. And I'm just using ignore hit pause on all the codes just to guarantee it works. You know, just to, it's another like safety. So I have the helper summoning code and it's going to summon a helper uh, state 4100. Going to go to 4100, which I call pulsing aura. Move type is I because if it's uh, anything else, like an attack, like A, uh, it'll make the enemy guard when they're next to you, and you don't want to do that because then it'll it pretty much gives you an advantage because you're always in attack mode since this helper is always in attack mode. You don't want to do that. And then your aura um, sprite priority, you want to put it either below or above. It's totally up to you, however you feel about it. Um, this demonstration here, it's behind him. Notice that it really is behind him, but let's try putting it in front of him and see how that looks. Yeah, actually, you know what? This looks more like an aura than the one in the back does. So, that, hey, I just figured it out. Ha 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 ha. Now, because it is a helper and it is copying the player's animation, it will copy their hitboxes as well. You do not want your helper, your effect helper, to be hit. So, you need a not hit by code. The trigger is one, so it's always active. And your uh, your values are going to be stand, crouch, or air. 
normal attack, special attack, hyper attack, normal projectile, special projectile, hyper projectile, normal throw, special throw, hyper throw. This protects it from every single kind of attack that could come its way, so it will not be hit. Because you don't want um, an enemy hitting your effect, and then your effect turns into a clone of yourself. For instance, let me show you how that works without it. If I hit him, there. So now this Kung Fu Man here in the middle is the effect. He's a real character now that I can't do anything with. So you need a not hit by. Uh, next is an assert special for no shadow. Um, because this is an effect, I don't want it to have a shadow. If it has a shadow, it looks really bizarre. I'm going to take that off for a second and show you how that looks. It doesn't show here very well, but sometimes, depending on the stage, it can look like it look like this pulsating, but it'll be down here. And it doesn't look good, so the no shadows, I, th I think, is necessary. You could try it without it, see how it looks. Um, next we need is a change anim. So, I did not declare an animation for the helper up here. Instead, I'm using a change anim, which will constantly change the animation based on the root, which is the player. The roots anim, which is the player's animation, and then the uh, player's animation element number, which I assigned to var2. The reason I assigned it to variable 2 versus just putting um, anim elem no here, I feel like it acts kind of funny and it doesn't work accordingly. Like something feels amiss when I did it the first time around. Like it looks like it works fine. It looks like it works fine, but the way I've always done it was with the variable uh, thing. I guess this could work. You could try it, see how it is. But I personally like to use the variable that I set there. And you can also um, you can also use parent instead of root like this, because since this um, pulsing effect uh, is a a child of the player, it you know, it, the parent is the player, but a safe code also is root because the player is always the root. So this change anim is what's going to change the helper's animation to match the player's animation all the time. This is necessary, 100% necessary. Otherwise, it would look like this. It would just be a pulsating standing animation. See? look at that so it's creepy so you need this to make it stay up to date with the current animation uh, bind to parent you need the bind to parent because it has to stay on the character if it does not you get this you get like a weird trail but notice how it's like walking but he's not there or he's jumping this could work as a good after image if you play with it correctly but it doesn't look that great also look see I'm as I hit the floor here he's hitting the floor in the air it does not look good at all so you need to bind to parent um, if you put your position to zero zero which I was testing this earlier it looks like the ore is going upwards and outwards I wanted to just kinda go down a little bit so it looks like more pulsating than anything else because now it's going down too okay these two are also important this is your angle draw code the angle draw code is the code that's enlarging the effect on um, this it's enlarging the helper which is the you know a sprite of the player so if I wanted to use let's see so this uh, pretend this is all common to that right you start with your your base value of one so that's uh, x scale is one one times itself so this is normal size then we do plus let's go with uh, one times asterisk is multiply time and then I'm gonna copy and paste it again comma so this is my X value that's my Y value so now the the length and width and the top and bottom are gonna enlarge by one by I wanna say it's not the same as like a multiplier as like one two three four five like that it's like I don't know how to explain it but as you can see is massive look at that so this is not what you want so that's the reason why I had a point zero two 
so you would play with this number. The first value is always one. This is your your normal size sprite size. The second value is what you want to enlarge it by over time. So if I did 0.5 and then 0.5 over time, that's going to give me, I think I messed up somewhere. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I meant to put a zero there. But as you can see, look, look at him. He looks like he's possessed or something. That's kind of cool, actually. There we go. So now it's like a big, massive aura. But, you know, you can always use, it's, you can use decimals. You can go more lower. You can go 0 0.2. Or you can even go uh, 0, 0 number, you know. Like, this works. And it's very minor visually. Like, he looks fuzzy. Like, CRT fuzzy. And then it becomes... That's actually a really cool effect now that I look at it. Hold on a second. I might I might steal this and use it for my own project. <laughs> wow, this actually looks really cool. You could do power effects to make them um, fade to white in the flash white, but this looks like contrasty white. Like godly colors. Anyways... Back to what I was doing. Okay, so that's the scale. So now the pulse should be correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. And the last code you need <coughs> is a, a trans code. The trans code is a transparency code. You can use add alpha, and then you're going to specify the alpha. So 256, 256 is half transparency. As you can see, he's transparent, but he's not fading. So what you need to do is, I want 256 to go down by 20 over time. Ah, over time. So it'll be essentially, what, 256, then it'll be 236, and then 206, 216, and then what, 190... Six, yeah, and then one seventy six. I'm not good at math, but you get the idea. So over time, it'll make it turn. It'll fade it out. So it'll turn from a a transparent sprite to uh, nothing, pretty much, which is what you want. And then destroy self, which kills the helper. And as because the helper is dead, this will spawn it again over and over. So if I set this to ten. Every 10 ticks, it'll spawn a helper for a faster pulse. And if I set this to f 100, it'll pulsate every 100 ticks for a slow pulse. I, I don't know when you'd use this, but I mean, that's, that's how that works. So, back there to that. So that's essentially it. Again, I like to assign my atom elm number to a variable, and you have to have your helper code. My trigger of preference is if the number of if the number of helper and the ID is this one, whatever your ID is, is equal to zero, then it will make the helper. You can use other codes too, like whatever you feel like. But th the basis of it is you need something like this, and then you go into the code itself. You have a not hit by to prevent your helper from becoming a clone that'll throw off the whole game you need an assert special to no shadow well I think you need it you probably don't need it you could try it see what happens you definitely need the change atom code this will keep the helper animation updated to match the players or the roots uh, a bind to parent to keep it on you so the pulse is staying on you instead of standing somewhere else angle draw to enlarge the pulse over time very important and then uh, a transcode to make it fade out over time and that's essentially all you need for a um, a pulsating aura effect yeah that's uh, that's pretty much it but anyways um, you know more videos to come as always please like comment subscribe and stay tuned for the next one see you then